There's one material that has been treasured for its beauty and value over the course of history, but new manipulations could make it worth more than its weight. You may know it for its bling, but gold sometimes hides in places where you can't see it shine. For example, take a look at a stained glass window. Some of the panes might look red, but it's gold that gives it that hue. If you make gold really, really small, it becomes other colors. And in the world of nanoparticles, a little gold can go a long way. You've probably seen a nugget of gold and understood its value. All the metals, gold has been um, fulfilling three different functions. Because it went into jewelry, uh, finger rings, bracelets, uh, brooches, all kinds of uh, uh, dress accessories, uh, gold uh, reflected the beauty, the status, but at the same time could be used for storing wealth. You pass from a generation to the other. Gold was used as a means of exchange. A small quantity of gold could be exchanged for all the goods on the, on the market. And finally, gold had, a, uh, from a very early moment, a, a strong association with the divine. Uh, which we still have nowadays. Uh, it goes, gold goes into the, li the liturgical vessels in the church. Um, it goes into um, uh, all sorts of aspects. For example, the uh, covers of the Bible are usually either made of gold or gilded, um, but it goes even beyond the, the, the objects themselves on the, on the building to mark the building as special in the form of gold leaf plated roofs, domes, uh, such as those of the Russian Orthodox Church. But the unique optical and physical properties of gold nanoparticles are being used in biomedical applications. Gold is a noble metal and as such as inert, so in principle it's relatively safe to, lose, uh, to use in small quantities uh, in, with, with clinical samples or even in the, in the body of the patient. So when people started to think about using nanoparticles to deliver therapies or drugs, they thought about gold as one of the options. So in general, when people started to think about how to use nanotechnology for cancer, they looked at two large major areas of application. One was diagnostics, the other one delivery of therapies in more effective way. And in general, what nanoparticles can do, can deliver the therapeutic cargo in more localized manner to the tumor site, and by that means reduce the side effects and hopefully also improve the efficacy or effectiveness of the treatment. Since this is a new technology, we have to pay attention how, uh, to the fact how safe uh, these nanoparticles are uh, in terms of being used uh, uh, to treat the patient and also how safe they are for, uh, with respect to the personnel who is producing them. Uh, but again, there is a set of regulations and also different uh, evaluation techniques which allow to determine it and make uh, their development uh, responsible and safe. Treating cancer is very difficult. I mean, we've been doing it for a long time. We have made a f uh, quite a bit of progress, but unfortunately, people are still di dying from cancer. Uh, and there are some cancers which we had a lot of success to treat, and there are some others like, for instance, brain, brain or lung or pancreatic, which are very difficult to treat. Uh, so, naturally developing new therapies often relies on modification of the uh, approaches which already exist. And for instance, you, uh, combination therapies, when you are trying to put two or more different drugs into one cocktail, which you hope will have a synergistic uh, effect, and in, uh, as a result will provide a better treatment. Uh, and again, all these concepts can be supported by delivery of nanoparticles for the reasons which we already mentioned. And also if you try to meter different drugs in the cocktail, if you put them on one particle, this metering can be more accurate. Probably one of the most fantastic uses of gold um, in recent times for rapid di diagnostic tests, where um, you know, just, a, just a drop of blood to the test strip and uh, gold nanoparticles that would drive a change of color uh, to uh, show whether a disease is present or not. Um, needless to say, this has rev revolutionary consequences because it makes um, uh, health costs, it drives health costs very low and it could be used uh, in, a, in a particular um, um, elements uh, added in any area of the world, in the, the remotest 
poorest of them to actually spot and um, uh, treat the diseases very early on. We now use gold in ways that was not even conceivable years ago. It is used um, uh, in uh, photography. Actually, the best quality uh, of printing is gold ink, added to the ink uh, printers for high quality image. It is used in glass making, um, a, uh, just a bit of drop um, in annealing, a, a, just a bit of, 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 of gold on a, on a suspended in glass can produce a, a very bright red, ruby red, which is what goes into the um, uh, stained glass. Um, uh, but, but at the same time, a gold film uh, could be added to the windows, either to um, protect them from radiation, solar radiation from the outside. Uh, this is actually the principle of the astronaut helmet visor protect the astronaut's face uh, from solar radiation in space. And gold is used in electronics. Every cell phone uh, contains about 50 cents worth of gold in it. Now, it's a very small amount, for sure, smaller than the one that goes into gold ingots or jewelry or what have you. But if you think of the enormous amount of uh, cell phones that exist out there, uh, that quantity is uh, quite substantial. And as a matter of fact, there is very little recycling of the phones, which actually has driven uh, the cost of gold on the market as a whole worldwide up precisely because of that. Because the new uses of gold uh, imply um, the use of a certain quantity of gold globally, right? Then, then, then the, the quantity of gold available, remaining available for any other uses, such as jewelry, for example, um, is smaller, and that actually drives the price of gold up, uh, which implies that uh, resources of gold being limited, we are practically looking at a, a higher price for the gold in your cell phones, which will mean that the cell phones themselves would, uh, will actually be priced higher. One of the challenges is to develop uh, uh, and establish manufacturing practices which will allow to produce larger quantities of particles which we currently uh, use as well as the particles of next generations in such a way that they will be ever a bit larger quantities with reproducible properties. Gold has always been treasured. Now we see its life-saving potential gives it an entirely new value. How can we ensure that its wealth can be shared with all of society?